Добър ден, шановни гости, члени на Канадско критско мистецки фундации, колеги, dear members of the Ukrainian Canadian Foundation and uh, the guests, thank you for coming today for the opening of the first uh, show at this gallery, at the Kung Gallery of Denis Holomenko's um, abstract paintings. We are, have a pleasure and honor to have his work today. It's very distinctive, very interesting works, uh, which uh, characterizes with the sophisticated lines, uh, forms, um, harmony of colors, and um, uh, some interesting associations of uh, visual associations and optical illusions. Uh, but more about uh, his um, biography, creative biography and art, will tell his sister who is present today, Yulia Lemankova. She will tell a few words about her brother. Thank you. Hello? Um, if it's okay, I'd just rather not use that. I thought it's just... Let's just leave it on? That's fine. Um, hi, my name is Julie. Um, in English, in Ukrainian, is Yulia. Um, I'd like to welcome you to Kumf Gallery presents Denis Golomenkov Kaleidoscope. Um, just a note about the artist's last name. Um, some people present here may not understand, but some Ukrainians don't like the sound of the last name Golomenkov, specifically, specifically the of ending, and the fact that it does not sound authentically Ukrainian. Um, Denis would agree with those people. And he's also not a fan of that ending, but it carries some historical significance. The thing is that endings like Ov and Ova would get added on to many Ukrainians' last names at the dawn of the communist USSR era. At that time, when Russia was taking control of other countries, people were forced to denounce their true nationalities and identify as Russian. Denis's great-grandfather, Ivan Holomenko, became one of such victims of Russification who then became known as Ivan Golimenkov. His children have maintained using this last name even after the fall of the Soviet Union, as it has become a part of the family's history. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the artists and the works that you're here to see. Denis Golimenkov was born in 1973 in Kiev, Ukraine, to an electronic engineer father and a book illustrator mother. From a young age, Dennis loved to draw and create things out of paper. He would watch his mother work and was fascinated by the process. His mother would encourage his interests by keeping him involved in her work. At his school age, Dennis participated in a lot of school projects and attending drawing and painting clubs. He also studied and participated in Ukrainian folk art at the studio of Petrikivska painting style. The young artists really liked the simplicity and elegance of lines, purity of colors, and the soft transitions of tones. Later on, Dennis attended School of the Arts number no. seven, where he learned painting, drawing, sculpting, composition, and art history. He took part in children's drawing competitions and would earn prizes and awards. Young Dennis was also very interested in anything related to graphics and printing. As a young artist, Dennis would help his artist mother create illustrations and typography of books and magazines. Through his mother's job and from her co-workers, Dennis learned the technology of printing and the graphics trade during the polygraphic manufacturing. After successful completion of art school, he took private lessons in portraiture and still life painting and composition at the Ukrainian Academy of Printing. During his final two years of public school, Dennis took courses at the School of Printing Technology, learned the foundations of technical printing, and received a bookbinding diploma. During his final year of school, and after its completion, the young artist worked at a designer firm and learned the foundations of advertisement and drafting. Having become very interested in drafting, he then decided to pursue further education in architecture. Dennis was accepted into the preparatory course of the Kiev National University of Construction and Architecture. There he studied drafting, drawing, still life painting, and composition. After passing the course and being accepted to the university, 
Dennis also studied the history of architecture, structural engineering, construction physics, and many other subjects. He participated in artistic and architectural exhibitions, where he earned prizes and awards, and was even able to sell some of his works. At the age of 21, after completing four years of university, Dennis was fortunate enough to be able to emigrate to Canada with his family. His family then immediately settled in Toronto and started their lives anew. Upon the move to Canada in 1995, Dennis found himself suddenly disconnected from all of his creative influences, the artist clubs he loved attending, and all of his friends. His education, education was cut short, and he struggled to find a place in this new life, no longer being a student of the arts. Dennis tried to find work to help in supporting his family, but experienced difficulty in doing so due, due to the language barrier and lack of relevant Canadian ex work experience. However, having possessed significant artistic and designing experience from Ukraine, he was hired as a graphic designer at the Ukrainian company Mikos Graphics, which was later renamed Oriana. He continued to develop through his skills, now digitally, and study English, and went on to work at the Ukrainian newspaper Mist and the printing company The Bazillion Press, where he created ads and designed various printed materials. After working for the Ukrainian companies, Dennis found his digital graphic design style and confidence in his work, and having made industry contacts, went on to do projects for Sposa Magazine, Bargain Tires, various members of multicultural communities, and corporate clients as a freelance graphic designer. In 2004, Dennis attended the International Academy of Design and Technology in Toronto, earned a scholarship, and graduated with high marks in 2005. Following that, he worked as a layout designer at the Toronto Sun, as a packaging designer at Spin Master and tra Transcontinental Printing, as well as a packaging designer and illustrator for home hardware. He also did some freelance work for Southern Graphic Systems and continued to do freelance work for his private clients. While working as a graphic designer, Dennis never stopped painting and experimenting with colors and forms. Having studied architecture, Dennis favored geometric shapes, light and shadow effects, gradual color changing, mosaics, tile, and stained glass windows. All of this is evident in Dennis's exhibition today, in the abstract symbolism of architecture and still life. Here showcased are the artist's love of straight lines, energy and colors, and illusions of 3D. As a Toronto-based artist, Dennis took part in exhibitions such as the annual Square Foot Show in 2009. Also in 2009, the artist held his first solo art show entitled Landscapes at the Studio Vogue Gallery. He also participated in the Sunnyside Beach Art Show and Sale in 2010 and 2011, and had his own booth at the Toronto Outdoor Art Exhibition in 2013. He also participated in various art shows at the Toronto Libraries and showed his works at the Art for All Seasons at the Lawrence Park Community Church, as well as other places. One of his creations is currently displayed on the hoarding of a construction site at Carlton and Church Street as a part of the Patch Project by the Steps Initiative, who select a lucky few local artists and grace Toronto streets with their talent. Parallel to his visual art, Dennis also creates original computer graphic images. His designs sell at many Canadian and international websites and can be ordered as prints on clothing and accessories. In his online portfolio, Dennis proudly maintained a lot of Ukrainian-oriented content. From, 2000, sorry, from 2014, when Russia first attacked Ukraine, Dennis has created more patriotic Ukrainian works, the profits of which he donates to the needs of the Ukrainian soldiers continuing to fight for the country's freedom. Dennis's canvas paintings and digital works have been purchased at art shows and online sites and today beautify interiors in Canada, America, United Arab Emirates, and Europe. And now I'm very proud to present to you my brother, Denis Golomenkov, who would like to say a few words about his collection and thank you all personally for coming to his show. <laughs> 